Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a quick look at the security market line for my FRM candidate customers especially. The security market line is related to but different from the capital market line that we looked at yesterday. Here's the capital market line. It's the straight blue line here that's anchored at the risk-free rate on the y-axis. That's where we're assuming 7% here. And it's the straight line that runs through the market portfolio illustrated here with the red dot. And so it describes the set of different portfolios that represent an asset allocation decision among two choices. One, the risk-free asset. So this portfolio is fully invested in the risk-free asset. And two, how much do we have in the market portfolio? So this portfolio here is invested entirely in the market portfolio. Then as we move up the line, we're borrowing to leverage the risk return of the market portfolio further. And so this capital market line becomes more efficient than our original efficient frontier. And how did we select the market portfolio among this efficient frontier set? Recall, it's the portfolio that maximizes the sharp ratio, the excess return divided by portfolio volatility. So the key thing, just tactically, I would remind you about the capital market line. The y-axis is expected return, and the x-axis is portfolio standard deviation. So we have risk on the x-axis versus return on the y-axis. So notice this x-axis is standard deviation. Now I'll flip, flip back to the security market line, and notice the expected return is still the y-axis, but now under the security market line, just tactically, the difference is now we have beta as the x-axis. On the left, we have the same set of assumptions that I looked at yesterday, a riskless rate, um, mean and variance for each of asset A and B, so I won't go through those again, and the correlation between the assets of 20%. And remember, the important thing we did here was solve for the market portfolio. And that means we took a simplifying assumption that the entire market consists only of the two assets, and then we solved for the optimal market portfolio, it turns out to be about 56% of asset A and 43% of asset B. And that's the optimal market portfolio because it has the highest sharp ratio. And so that market portfolio that consists of mostly asset A and almost less of asset B has an expected return of 12.18% and a volatility of 11.3%. And then we'll notice now that that market portfolio's excess return is 5.18%. To get the excess return, we simply take the market portfolio return of 12.18 and subtract the riskless rate. So the expected return on the market portfolio is 5.18% above the riskless rate. And now the plot of the security market line is characterized by the capital asset pricing model here, where we say the expected return of the security, but this is, could also be of a portfolio, ought to equal the riskless rate plus beta, which is the measure of sensitivity, and which is also called the quantity of risk in the FRM, beta multiplied by this excess return on the market portfolio, which is also called the price of risk or the equity risk premium. And so we have a single factor linear model for the expected return of the security. And notice it's anchored here at 7% at the same riskless rate. So both the capital market line and the security market line are anchored at the risk-free rate. But at the risk-free rate here, the riskless asset, that is only cash. That has Cash has no beta or no sensitivity to the market portfolio. So this term is zero. And the logic of the security market line and the capital asset pricing model is that the expected return on security is a function of only a single factor. It's a single factor model, that factor being the sensitivity of that security as measured by beta to 
the equity risk premium. And therefore, you can see I've highlighted here the red dot, again, the market portfolio. The market portfolio is itself on the security market line. The market portfolio, by definition, has a beta of 1, so we would expect it to be right here on the x-axis at 1, and the expected turn return right here is 12.18%. As we invest in securities with betas higher than one, then we move up here to the right. So down below on the spreadsheet, which you can, uh, which is uploaded to the member page, are more of the manual calculations to illustrate some different portfolios. These are portfolios now, not of a single security, but of combinations of asset A and B. So for example, here's a portfolio that consists of 50% of asset A and 50% of asset B. And here's the covariance of that portfolio to the market portfolio. Again, the covariance of this portfolio that's 50-50 to this market portfolio. And I won't go into the details of that calculation, but here's the covariance. And if we divide the co that covariance by the variance of the market, we get the beta. And so that I'll put that formula right here. My FRM candidates will certainly know that beta here is defined by covariance of the security and the market divided by or standardized by the variance of the market. So that's the formula for beta. That gets computed right here. And then the expected return, you can see, is just utilizes the capital asset pricing model. It's the risk-free rate plus beta times the equity risk premium. And so any of these portfolios are on the security market line, any of these mixes of A and B, because they just, the mix of A and B determines the covariance, which determines the beta of that particular portfolio to the market portfolio, including over here, for example, I found or solved for the portfolio that is long 100, it's a long short portfolio, long asset A 160%, short asset B 60%. That portfolio has a covariance of about zero to the market portfolio, and therefore its expected return matches the risk free rate. So I go back up to the graph, then what we have is this equation here is the plot of this line here, and Notice the other thing I did here is I subtracted the risk-free rate off of both sides because another helpful way to think about this is the excess return of the security. Now I'm saying the, the, the expected return of the security minus the risk-free rate. So I just subtracted the risk-free rate on both sides is now proportional to its systematic risk or beta. That ends up, ends up being a very compact way of thinking about it. Let me say it one more time. The excess return of the security is proportional to the systematic risk, the single factor called beta, the sensitivity of that portfolio to the market premium or equity risk premium. So I hope that was a helpful look at the security market line. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.